actions. Next, let's continue to learn about the way to give Dharma teachings. Actions when teaching the Dharma. First, purify oneself and the environment in which the teachings are given. This means keeping one's body and mind clean. It is not necessary to take a shower, but your body shouldn't smell bad. The author suggested taking a shower, but if you have discipline and concentration, this may not be necessary. Some Tibetan gurus had never taken a shower in their lifetime, so what would you do in that case? Although they didn't have water, they were quite pure. Therefore, it's most important to keep the body and mind pure. If you can chant the mantras for overcoming demons, actually, this still requires discipline and concentration. If your intention is pure, then the Dharma protectors will be around you, and naturally there will be no demons. The so-called obstacle means that under the influence of demons, the minds of the teacher and the disciples are not harmonious. When demons interfere, the disciples may generate negative thoughts. Some new students, when listening to my teachings, may generate evil thoughts and wrong views in their minds. This is because under the influence of demons, the seeds in your eighth consciousness arise. The cause is your impure mind. If a listener is very reverent and devout, then demons won't be able to interfere. If a teacher's body and mind are peaceful and pure, they can teach the Dharma. In the Lotus Sutra, it is said that wise individuals should always give sweet-sounding teachings with manifold meanings, without jealousy. Moreover, they should stay away from physical and mental laziness and should not feel weary of teaching the Dharma. This is very important. If a Dharma teacher harbours jealousy, then they may inadvertently expose the faults of other teachers or monastics, which can lead to slander or anger from others. I will not mention any specific names regarding this. Some very famous Dharma teachers, while imparting teachings, may be a bit careless. Of course, some of what they say may be true, but it may be an exaggeration or only a partial truth. For example, a teacher said, don't make offerings to monastics. In fact, he might be referring to fake monastics who don't practice, uphold the precepts or propagate the Dharma. Such people cannot be supported. However, if a monastic, despite not propagating the Dharma, is engaging in Dharma practice, or despite having violated the precepts, is making efforts to rectify himself, then he is still worthy of support and it's meritorious to support him. In the Dharma ending age, even if a monk has violated the precepts, If they are making efforts to rectify themselves and aspire to seek the truth, in the Dharma ending age, the environment is very challenging and sometimes it's unavoidable to violate the precepts unintentionally. However, if they diligently repent and rectify themselves, they are still worthy of support. In the Dharma ending age, it's already fortunate to be able to support such monastics. It's lucky to be able to make offerings to the three jewels. We shouldn't expose the faults of other monastics, especially when giving a public teaching. 
even if what you say is true, it can undermine the faith and willingness of lay people to support and approach monastics. This behaviour can hasten the decline of the Dharma. You may say, but what I said was true, I saw it with my own eyes. However, as Buddha's Atvas, we should spread others' virtues and conceal their faults. In our daily lives, we should practice this. We should conceal others' faults and praise their virtues. If you immediately expose the faults of others, it indicates that you must have jealousy, fearing that they may surpass you. By exposing their faults, you undermine others' faith in them and gain their faith in yourself. This is what a Dharma teacher should avoid the most. This jealousy may be very subtle and you may not even notice it. It can easily arise when you are teaching. This is a very subtle form of jealousy, not a strong one. It's not easy to practice this consistently. That's why it's important to give sweet-sounding teachings with manifold meanings. Don't expose the faults of other monastics. It's not good. Except for a few individuals who have been possessed by demons, we never expose the faults of other monastics. However, in the Dharma Ending Age, very few temples in China are actively propagating the Dharma. I don't know about the situation in other places. Therefore, we point out this issue. However, our intention is to encourage more people to listen to the Dharma instead of belittling other monastics. Other monastics may be engaged in retreat or practicing their own teachings. This is quite normal. A Dharma teacher should refrain from jealousy and not withhold the essential teachings due to fearing the listeners surpassing them or fearing other teachers surpassing them. A Dharma teacher should be free from all afflictions and take delight in the Dharma. They should cultivate loving kindness towards those around them and diligently practice the supreme teachings. A Dharma teacher should be joyful and kind and diligently practice the Dharma. This means that the Dharma teacher should be free from afflictions, be joyful and kind. A Dharma teacher should use various analogies to expound the Dharma, making the listeners enjoy learning the Dharma and appreciate the Dharma. A Dharma teacher should possess skillful means in teaching the Dharma, using numerous analogies, stories and expressions to make the listeners enjoy listening to the teachings. This means that the teachings should be presented in an engaging and interesting way. When expounding the Dharma, one should never have the slightest desire for worldly gain, nor should one seek food, bedding, robes, medicine, etc. One shouldn't seek anything from the listeners. This is crucial. If you have any desire for worldly gain while teaching, it's not right. It's important to have no desire for worldly gain. When you teach the Dharma with this state of mind, the Dharma protectors will support you and the Buddhas will rejoice. You will receive blessings from the Buddhas and Buddhas Atvas and the teachings will be wonderful. The listeners will be willing to listen and their hearts will be receptive. This requires a very pure intention. It's crucial. Rather, a Dharma teacher should always think, may I myself and all living beings achieve Buddhahood. This means generating Buddhachitta. And, 
Whatever teaching I impart in order to help the world is a favourable condition for my happiness. If one follows the above principles to expound the Dharma, one will definitely illuminate the world like the sun. The ornament of the Mahayana Sutras states, when teaching the Dharma, if one possesses wisdom, eloquence, diligence, compassion, credibility and skillful means, then one will illuminate the world like the sun. This means that if one consistently and tirelessly teaches the Dharma in accordance with the capacities of the listeners, possessing wisdom, eloquence, unwavering diligence, compassion, credibility and skillful means in guiding beings without errors or the desire for worldly gain, then they will illuminate the world like the sun.